Good evening. Commuters will face more strikes on the underground, the first on Friday, the next on Tuesday. The news came after the rail union, RMT, rejected London Underground's latest pay and conditions offer. But there was one piece of good news. ASLEF, which represents the majority of tube drivers, voted to accept the deal. The RMT's decision to reject London Underground's latest offer will come as a blow to the tube's one and a half million regular users. They've had to endure seven one-day strikes so far this summer. Under the deal on offer, tube staff would have their hours gradually cut from 38 and a half hours a week at the moment to 35 by 1998. Pay would go up 1.5% this year and then 2% below the rate of inflation next year and the year after. RMT's 900 London Underground members are angry at the pay increases. They voted by a majority of more than 3 to 1 to reject the offer. Over three years, uh, pay in real terms will be 6% below the rate of inflation. And I'll just uh, point out that if the inflation figures remain static, e.g. it's 2.2% at the moment, it would mean our members would get a 0.2% pay rise next year. But it's not all bad news. The train drivers union ASLEF, which has 2,000 members working for London Underground, has voted in favour of the deal. So this Friday and next Tuesday, the RMT will be striking alone. London Underground are confident that with two-thirds of their train staff back at work, they'll be able to run a substantial service. Police tonight called off their search for two South London children who disappeared from a Norfolk beach. Jodie Lochlin and her four-year-old brother Tom haven't been seen since Sunday. It's feared they've been washed out to sea. Police divers wading through marshland near Hunstanton on day three of the search for the missing London children. There's been no sign of Jodie or Tom since Sunday. This morning the search turned from the beach and the sea to the desolate East Anglian wetlands behind them. More than 50 RAF ground crew from a nearby airbase joined the operation combing woodland and a helicopter swept the area once again. This afternoon, police said they wanted to talk to a man who kicked a football back to the children shortly before they vanished. It's hoped he may have heard or seen something that could be important. The man who kicked the black and white football back to the, the family is the chap we would like to speak to, and indeed anybody else who um, saw the family on the beach between about 5 o'clock and 7.30 last Sunday. An hour ago, the search was officially called off. It seems increasingly likely six-year-old Jodie and her four-year-old brother have been swept out to sea. And some local people who know the tides are grimly warning it's possible the bodies may never be found. The youngsters' parents, who are from Norwood in South London, are still at the scene tonight waiting for news. They're said to be realistic about the chances of ever seeing their children again. And that's all from us this evening. Now the weather with David Lee. Good evening. Well, we've seen some sunshine across uh, southern areas, and that still brought temperatures up above the average, 26 degrees there across in East Anglia. But further north, a fair amount of cloud and rain. Edinburgh, during daylight hours, seeing about uh, 15 millimetres. You can see on our satellite picture here, the large areas of cloud across Scotland and Northern Ireland. But much clearer skies further south, the sunshine, hence those higher temperatures. But behind me, there's the next band of cloud coming in across the Atlantic, and that's like to swing eastwards across most parts of the country during tomorrow. But we've got some rain still across the far northwest of Scotland and also across the northeast. In fact, this is quite thundery rain. Could affect Orkney and Shetland through the night. Any showers elsewhere dying away. There's the area of low pressure which has given the rain today. Here's the next area of low pressure in the frontal system, that cloud in the Atlantic, and that's going to be pushing its way steadily eastwards tonight through Ireland, eventually by morning into some parts of Northern Ireland, West Wales, and the southwestern parts of England. But elsewhere, it's going to be a fairly clear night, a little bit misty, I think, by the end of the night too, as temperatures get down to about 9 or 10 degrees. Then moving on to tomorrow, well, that uh, frontal system certainly pushing its way steadily eastwards during the day. So I think it won't be long before we find rain across southwest England, Wales, in towards Northern Ireland. Some of that rain quite heavy. Then it's going to move steadily eastwards during the rest of the day. Although I think East Anglia, some eastern coast of England, and certainly northeast Scotland should stay dry and bright right through to the end of the afternoon or early evening. And by then, too, brighter weather into the west, but still some fairly heavy showers there with quite a strong breeze temperatures about 18 degrees but across the east again up around about 22 or even 23 degrees so the test match should get away with more or less a fine day with some sunshine then moving ahead to friday and saturday the area of low pressure still there so unsettled weather perhaps persistent rain at first in the southeast and again across central and northeastern parts of scotland but that breaking up then a mixture of sunshine and showers temperatures around about 21 degrees and then moving into the weekend too the low still there 
So the same old mixture of sunshine and showers, some of those quite heavy, possibly even some thunderstorms in some places, but some places seeing very few showers.